Welcome to Carly Tackles making a T-Track mount for her Craig pocket jig. You probably saw me use a pocket hole jig in my previous videos. I use it quite a bit. If you haven't, here's a little flashback to me using a pocket hole jig on a previous project. Craig's pocket hole jig is very handy. I've used it on many of my projects and you can watch it in my videos. I also purchased a dust collection adapter that goes on the back that allows you to connect a vacuum and helps suck up the sawdust. That made a huge difference in keeping my work area clean. I'll include the links to the products in the video description below. For the base, I'm using a half inch plywood scrap that I had lying around. I went ahead and cut it to be the depth of my Craig jig, which was about 10 and 5 eighths of an inch. And it was already cut to 24 inches wide, which will fit for my workbench, so I'm leaving it like that. So a few things that I want to do to this mount, I want to one, drill holes to put knobs in so it can slide through a T-track. Two, I want to build up a surface next to my Craig so when I'm putting a very big piece of board, it has more room to support the board so it doesn't wobble back and forth like this. So that's what you're going to watch me do today. I'm taking some measurements to determine the center of the board and where the Craig pocket hole jig will sit. Using a speed square, I'm going to make sure that my Craig pocket jig is mounted squarely on the board. The pocket hole jig has four screw mounting brackets that you can use to mount this to a workbench or to your new jig. The base of the pocket hole jig is about an inch tall, so I'm using a table saw to rip a 2x4 down to fit that dimension. I'm taking a little bit off of each of the sides on the 2x4 to ensure that it is flat and square when I mount it. I will then take it to my miter saw to cut the piece in half. Before gluing these two pieces down, I want to do a quick test and make sure that it's smooth and flush with my pocket hole jig. Using a speed square and just running it back and forth to see if it catches on any of the lips. If it does catch, you might want to sand it down or retry cutting it in your saw. Now I'm making sure that the two blocks are positioned similarly on each side of the pocket hole jig. After applying the glue, you want to clamp your board in place so that it can dry. I'm using a Craig Auto Match 6 inch clamp. I really like using this clamp because it auto adjusts to the thickness of your material. It's kind of like a vice grip, but instead of turning the knob, it automatically fits it. Rockler's bench cookies are really handy. Today I'm going to be using them along with their riser as a platform to help hold this piece off of my workbench so I can drill through the boards. If you have bench cookies lying around and need a place to store them, you should check out my latest video on bench cookie dispensers. After the glue has dried, you want to pre-drill some holes using a countersink drill bit. The countersink drill bit will allow the screws to stay flush with the wood. Now that I'm done with one of my blocks, it's time to do the second one. Don't feel like that you have to take turns with these blocks, you can do them both at the same time.
Now I have my two support blocks in place and ready to move on to the next step. I'm using my old T-Track mount as a template. The T-Track bolts that I purchased are 5 16 in diameter, so I'll be using a 5 16 drill bit. My old template had the holes spaced 16 inches apart, matching the T-Track dimensions on my workbench. If you haven't yet installed T-Tracks, I would recommend spacing holes 16 to 20 inches apart. That way your accessories have plenty of room to move inside of your knobs. This is the T-Track bolt that I'm going to be using. They do come in a variety of heights. I'm going to place it from the underneath side and then fasten my knob on the top. There you have it. Our pocket hole jig is complete. I am going to take it all apart, sand it down, and then give it a coat of paint to help protect it. This jig allows you to move your Craig pocket hole system to multiple areas in your workshop. This is a stationary workbench that I have that I used to use and actually had this pocket hole jig mounted to with screws, but it can take up some space. So now I made it really easy to mount using a T-Track system. And when I want to move it or I want to clear off space on my workbench, I just slide it into my new portable workbench, line up the T-Track bolts with the T-Track, and away I go. If you're going to use T-Tracks in multiple areas in your workshop, I would recommend installing them the same distance apart. This will allow you to move a jig to multiple areas in your workshop. Thanks for watching Carly Tackles making a T-Track mount for her Craig pocket hole jig. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you'd like to see more videos like this, like how to make this flippable workbench, please subscribe to my channel, Carly Tackles DIY Tools and Gadgets Tips and Tricks. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the bell so you receive notifications when I release new content.